this is something that is really subtle, but it is incredibly impactful. I'm going to talk about and say this word, and you're probably going to want to turn this off because who wants to talk about this topic? But if you can be, and this is what I'm going to talk about today, patient and understand it, you will get through this video and actually love it. And it will be something that you can practice and embrace. Patience has this negative undertone. I have yet to see anyone say, you know what, I want to learn this. I've got a lot of patience. I know I can do this. No one. Almost every single person says, oh, I'm one of those people that have no patience. As if you're bragging, as if it's this thing that makes you special. To me, if I ever have heard anyone go, you know, I have patience, I'm going to take the time to learn this, I'd be like, I'd be floored. <laughs> I'd fall out of this chair because I know how powerful that is. It's so powerful. But when you think of the word patience, it sounds very weak. It sounds forever. It seems like you're never going to get anywhere with that word and that mindset. But once I teach people how to be patient, one, you're going to learn exponentially faster than when you are impatient. Two, you're going to have more joy in what you're doing. You're really going to enjoy it. You're going to take it in, not skip over things and be in a hurry. Your emotions are going to be more stable, consistent, less up and down and less frustrated. And anger, I mean, most people that are impatient when they're learning something can get very angry or frustrated. So a lot of negative emotions tie in to not being patient. But most importantly, when you are patient, it seems really slow. But because you're not skipping over things, because you are not putting so much pressure on yourself, that almost when you're not patient, you will stumble over things because you're trying to get through it quickly and you end up skipping over what's really, truly important. And when you do that, it's a slow process when you try to go too fast. But when you take your time and feel like you got all day to learn it, whew, you go so fast. It's as if you're skipping over things because you haven't. It, you go really fast. So that's why when I hear people say, oh, I'm so impatient or I have no patience. I'm one of those you know, rare people that are not patient. It's not rare. It's very common. The rare ones are the ones that take the time to really do things and learn it deliberately. Those people are very fast at learning. So I'd love for you to embrace the word patience and not attach it to something negative, something slow. I want you to attach it to, oh, I'm building something. I'm taking each step and seeing the entire picture while I'm learning, not skipping over steps, falling, so much and picking yourself up, but it's okay to fall. I love when you make mistakes along the way as you learn because you're gonna be better for it, but you don't even get to learn from your mistakes because you're so much in a hurry. Here are a few things that you can do, even on a daily basis. So let's say you're learning a skill set of anything. You know, I like to talk about golf because I'm a golf instructor. But this is with anything, instruments, um, if you're learning how to dance, if you're learning how to climb, anything. You can do this 
patience practice throughout your day. So here's an example. One day I was late and I grabbed my keys and I quickly, you know, put the keys in the door and, and locked it. And then I went to the, the car and, you know, I did the same thing. I'm like fumbling through the keys, you know, trying to get ready to start the car. And I was like, wait a minute. And I stopped everything. I just <sighs> took a deep breath. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to grab the key <laughs> and start the car that way. And it was way faster than me fumbling through the keys, all the different keys and, and rushing through it. That did not make me do what I wanted to do faster. It actually made me fumble more. So throughout the day when I feel like I'm rushing and I realize it's unproductive, there's times where, yeah, you got to walk faster to get somewhere because, you know, you got to get there. I get that. But there's certain things that you can catch yourself going, wait a minute, I am just rushing to the point that it's slowing me down. And when you can do that on a daily basis and catch yourself, you will find that things become more productive. But most importantly, underlying reason why I even want to talk about all this is that you will be happier. So next time you're walking outside and you're walking fast to get where you're going, if there isn't a time frame, I'd love for you to take your time, take a deep breath, smell the fresh air, and you'll start noticing the flowers, the trees, the sound of the birds, the beautiful sky. And you get to take so much in, even though you you are taking it slow. So look what you've captured in that moment when you take your time. But if you just walk fast, just all you're thinking about is getting where you're going and everything else is a nuisance and you just got to hurry up and go there. And there is really no time frame. That's what I'm saying is a lot of times people are in a hurry and there's no real reason to be in a hurry. It's just something that we're conditioned to do. So then if you do that, you get to wherever you're going and you've actually missed everything that was in that walk. And there's so much to capture. There's so much joy when you capture it. You don't even have to go, you know what? This is going to be a happy walk or I'm going to be happy or I'm going to be joyous. It's not about that. It's not about you manufacturing the joy or happiness, you know, it's not even to get to where you are to get happy. It's not the destination. It's how you get there is to just observe. Just take it slow and go, wow, this feels good. And you look around, you get to start seeing things. And it becomes more vivid and clear. The colors are more vivid because you're more aware. And when that happens, there is this joy and happiness that just is a side effect of it. It's not because you expected it. It's not because, oh, if I do this, this is going to make me happy. But there's this underlying peace when you're in that mode. And you will really get to take in life. Now, let's take this a step further and add it to a skill set you're learning. You know, a golf swing, a golf game. And if you can take your time, be patient with yourself, knowing that, you know what? I'm going to do these slow motion swings, practice swings, to really encapsulate what I'm learning. Like, what is it? What is this motion that my teacher is teaching me? 
instead of, oh, I'm, I just want to skip over this. I'm going to, you know, what's that one tip that's going to get me to shoot my best score? <laughs> you know, it's more like, what do I need to do to build a foundation? And that seems slow. That sounds slow, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound faster when, when I say, I want that one tip or two tips that's going to get me where I want to be to shoot my best score? Or what is more realistic? I'm going to build a foundation, get over my bad habits. And over time, as I practice, and the new habits form and a new swing arises through all this productive practice, I'm going to shoot my best score or I'm going to play my best game or I'm going to be the best golfer that I have ever been. If that's your goal. And what is more realistic? The other one may seem like, oh wow, one or two tips, I'm going to get there. You're never going to get there. It, it, it will actually take a very long time and maybe some luck along the way just you know reprograms your swing but it's very rare you know that's a long path it seems quick at the moment but it's that's forever <laughs> but if you go i'm going to build a foundation and i'm going to start learning the fundamentals actually along the way you're going to start seeing progress and over time as you build and you're like oh wow i'm starting to get this i'm, I'm getting more coordinated I'm seeing better shots. That momentum is very fast. And so I've had so many students like that have couldn't break 100 and they're shooting 80s and 70s. And you know what they would say to me? They're like, you know what? It didn't take as long as I thought. Because during the lessons in the beginning, they'll be like, oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. And then they look back a year a year later or a year and a half or two years and they're like, wait a minute, I'm shooting like low 70s. That wasn't very long. But if they didn't go through that and they kept doing bad habits and quick tips here and there, they'll probably shoot 100 for the rest of their lives. So this is what I mean by taking it slow so you can go fast. So the word patience, when you hear it, Think of it as something positive. Think of it as, wow, I'm going to go somewhere far and fast. And also be proud of it. When you learn how to be patient, I'd love for you to be that small percentage of people. I mean, rarely do I ever see anyone that ever say, you know, I'm patient. I can learn this. I know it's going to take some time but I'm going to learn it. Those people learn so fast. So keep that in mind. Practice patience and be proud of it when you, when you learn it and apply it to your life. And you'll be very surprised in how far you go and fast.